Let's do some news. My name is Mike B. A.K. Phony. Today's day is March 26, 2021. We are already, already almost four months. Oh, actually, no, no. We're almost to the fourth month. We're almost complete with three months of 2021. Isn't that crazy? Is that crazy? I'm still writing 2020 on things. I still can't get over that. I'm typing it out. 2020. Da, 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 da. Still haven't done my taxes. Jen's going to kill me again. <sighs> spring news. That's right. It's spring break. It's spring break. You can tell it's spring break just by going to twitch.tv slash just chatting or whatever the category is. <laughs> just go there and you can see it's spring break, guys. Spring break. Uh, right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Uh, you still write? I mean, not often, but you know, when you sign up for your COVID stuff, your COVID vaccine, you know, you got to write stuff. And so I was like, 2020, it was like, start over. <laughs> Good thing they extended the due date on, uh, on taxes. Did they really? Did they really? Don't tell me that. No, don't tell me. No, 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 no don't answer that. I, I can't, you can't. <laughs> Like I can't use that as an excuse to procrastinate, please. Um, where is my spa and bikini? I know. I know. Where's my spa and bikini? I brought the honeys though on Sunday. Look at this one. Look at this one. Look at this one. Hi, Sunday. Want to say hi? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Look at this one. What a sweet girl. You like older ladies? Mm-mm-mm. Oh, yes. Okay, I'll put you back for your bike. Whoop. Thank you for joining us. We'll spin you around a little bit. There we go. All right. I just want that sleep. You see her ass towards me because I started talking loud. So <laughs> you got your $7,000 refund already? Get on it. Dang. What? That's awesome. That's amazing. You know what you could put that towards? You could put that towards crowdfunding for Discord because Discord is looking for a buyer. And it says here that Microsoft is in talks to buy Discord for more than $10 billion. Now, this is one of those things where on the surface, and we're going to speculate a little bit. What would happen if Microsoft bought a voice chat and direct communication utility? What would happen? I wonder what would happen if they did anything like this. Hmm. Couldn't think. I don't know. Microsoft Teams, Skype. I don't know. Let's ask Skype. Let's figure it out. <laughs> Uh, I spent all my money to buy Raptor. Oh, geez. Wow. <laughs> would it be a totally new market for them. That's right. They would make it worse than teams. They would ruin it like everything else. Skype still works. Technically, technically Skype still works. It's great for receiving uh, links to uh, women in my area who want to have sex. Lots of those. Um, but yeah, so here's the thing. Like this article started spreading. Uh, and people started getting in a, in a little bit of a huff about it, right? And I understand because Skype, I used to use Skype all the time. I have so many people. I have so many people on my Skype. Um, and like, it was just the way that we communicated for everything. That's how we did like, you know, like we, for a minute, that's how we did shows. We just use a video from there. It was perfect. And then, uh, and then it just kind of got to shit. Like, I think once they started doing the whole, was it? Windows 8 app or Windows whatever like whatever like applet that came like pre-installed with Windows like that's when I started going to shit um obviously after Microsoft took over so of course people look at this and they say oh Discord's gonna just Microsoft's gonna buy Discord they're gonna do the same thing right uh but here's what it says in the article so uh, you have me on Skype from like six years ago yeah exactly yeah I have so many people on my Skype it's crazy because it was just the best way to communicate. But now we have Discord. So uh, so it says, Discord has been talking to potential buyers and, and the software giant Microsoft is in the running, but no deal is imminent, said the people who asked not to be identified because the discussions are private. Discord is more likely to go public than sell itself, uh, one person said. Representatives from Microsoft and Discord declined to comment. So, oh, also, Discord has also held discussions with Epic Games uh, and Amazon in the past, according to two people familiar with the matter. So it's not that Microsoft is in talks to buy Discord for more than $10, million, $10 billion. The speculation is that they're talking to potential buyers. By an anonymous, anonymous person says this, right? From Microsoft, Epic, and Amazon. 
So there really is nothing here except pure 1000% speculation. We don't know this to be true. We don't know that this is going to happen at all. Uh, all we know is that an anonymous person said. Now, obviously, reporters aren't going to out their, their anonymous sources, right? So we have to, you know, we have to, we have to trust them on this. You know, typically we have to trust them, you know, on, on, trust the media and such, right? Trust them that they're not going to lie, just make up some shit just for some clicks. Um, <clears throat> with that being said, to speculate that, you know, big ass companies are going to buy other big ass companies on a site like Bloomberg uh, and just make that shit up. Like that's that's also some, a, a quick way to get yourself a lawsuit, right? Um, see, I, I, all three of those com- mentioned companies. I, yeah, you would... <laughs> I mean, you guys know that Tencent has a pretty large like chunk of uh, of Discord, right? We should probably bring that up too. And and Tencent's not really the kind of company that wants to sell. But they wouldn't really sell the technology. They want to keep all that. So so I, I don't think that. I think that the 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 probably the most logical path for Discord is to have a um is to go public and have an offering. And the reason why I say that is because Roblox. And I, should, I should probably mention it here. Actually, let me see. Uh, control Roblox. Uh, it's not okay. Um, well, Roblox went um, went public, and they, they had like a forty two billion dollar or something like that, like some crazy, crazy, crazy initial offering. Um, and their stocks apparently doing fine. I did not check. Uh, so if if Roblox can do that well, I, I see Tencent looking at Discord as why well, we just make it public, and then we'll just you know become shareholders, majority shareholders, and then blah blah blah. Uh, I had no idea Roblox was that popular. Apparently, it's like crazy popular let me actually go and pull up just so i can have it we're gonna pull up uh see roblox stock uh roblox stock will pull up for the past like uh let's see they only went public like just like less this month as a matter of fact um let me see blow this up a little bit for y'all so yeah i mean their stock is doing fine like usually when there's an offering it either goes up or it goes down right um but yeah they came out here was this march 10th 69 dollars and they're chilling at 70. I mean that's good. They didn't go anywhere. Like that's great. That means that the that means the valuation was probably pretty accurate. Uh, that it's a fluctuation, and this is you know three weeks after the fact. Like this is well beyond when you'd have that initial offering like roller coaster ride. Everybody's buying in. Everybody's selling. Everybody's whatever. So yeah, Roblox stocks. That's right, Roblox stocks. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, exactly. Your Roblox apparently is like massive, like, like, and I, I see, I know it is, right? Um, I say apparently because I've ever played it myself. Uh, but it's everywhere. It's ev- in ev- every, every place you turn, some some kid knows about Roblox. Like they, they, they just play. It's just a game they play. Just like what I have. Just don't play Roblox for sure. Um, who needs GME when you got? That's right, Roblox, Roblox. Yeah, but Tensa also owns tanks, not world tanks, actual real tanks. Did not know this. Roblox, yeah, Roblox any for breakfast? Shit. That game is a pure, like, sandbox hell. It's basically VR chat without the VR portion. Um, I mean, not necessarily a bad thing. It's just that, you know, it's just a l- lot of content to try to... I'm not doing that. <laughs> I'm not doing that. This is for you. Just, just, just if you want your kids to go and experience the VR chat without the VR, then Roblox is the way to go. Um, they have almost any game, even Phasophobia Roblox style. Yes, that's that. So they have these like rooms that you can create. So these environments, instances that you could create where you can basically invite people and uh, and they can have, they could play all, all kinds of different games that they've made Roblox style. That's crazy. Um, did you know there's a VR setting in, in Valheim? Oh boy. <laughs> speaking of rumors speaking of rumors goddamn verge with their big ass crazy ads jesus christ why i have this is why i have ad block on man this is the turn this shit on again dang it verge killing me right now oh you didn't reset we're gonna start let me see there ah an article i'll turn it on later off later rather the nintendo switch the nintendo switch uh pro more more rumors more rumors but these ones have been circulating for a bit and they feel pretty they feel i feel like these might be pretty like pretty solid right so the next nintendo switch will use uh a uh system on chip so sock 
similar to like the uh, the M1 or whatever that Apple's using. Um, and support for DLSS, which is Deep Learning Super Sampling. If you don't know what that is, it is uh, where they can scale it up from like 540p to 1080p and it would look amazing because it's deep learning the scaling it's not just looking at pixels and saying yeah okay well this color is this this color and this this color let's scale it up and we'll try to make it work and we'll apply like a, a, a noise filter to kind of like create some kind of sharpening effect like no this is like actual supposed actual deep learning uh scaling Star Trek DLSS was my favorite. <laughs> so yeah, this is a pretty big deal. Uh, you know, in terms of you know, in terms of switch. I mean, the, the 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 technology itself is already you know amazing. Uh, being able to take people that have 4K monitors, but maybe you know some crusty old 980 Ti that can't run anything on it, and so they could scale things up and probably play the game pretty well. Um, well, actually, no, not really. <laughs> <laughs> you would still need like a 10 something, I think, in order to really take advantage of that. Uh, also, a 7 inch OLED. I've combined some of these rumors together, but this this article apparently had all of them, which is great. Um, if you're wondering what that is, if you want how big 7 inches is, uh, the screen here, this from here to here, basically from corner to corner, outside of the black borders, okay, that is just seven inches okay all right so just if you have a switch just lay your penis on it and there you go measure it that way all of us at least got that right right guys all right so uh no notes on whether or not they're gonna change manufacturers for their joy con um which has the the known joy con drift issue i'll show you what it looks like It looks like this. Notice it looks just like every other Joy-Con. And the reason why is because every motherfucking one will eventually start to drift. I thought that I was clear because I was like, I play my I play my Switch every once in a while. I play it pretty often. It's probably no problem whatsoever. And then and then it started to drift by itself. Just started just started moving like my thumb was doing this. And it made me so mad because you couldn't like just knock it and try to knock it back to the middle. And so, yes, I too fell victim to this. So, yeah, we don't know yet if that's going to be repaired. We don't we don't know. We don't really officially know anything about the uh, Switch Pro, except that it's probably going to be more expensive. The rumor also another rumor is that uh, it's going to be 50 to 100 dollars more expensive. Um, which will put it at like, what, 299 or something like that. I think they're like two ninety nine. I think right now they're like a two hundred dollars, right? Uh, or maybe two ninety nine or three forty nine, somewhere around there. Uh, that's <clears throat> that's a price I'm willing to pay for a, a console that I literally play every single day. I there's like hardly a day that goes by where I'm not playing that damn thing. Uh, two ninety nine right now. Oh, three forty. I guess so. Three forty nine then. Okay, yeah. Uh, if it's if it's got a better CPU, then it's still gonna. Uh, if it's not got a better CPU, then it's still gonna suffer. Well, they're, they're saying it's gonna be. Um, a, a, it's a new. It's right there. It says a new Nvidia sock uh, system on chip where basically everything is all on one chip. So there's no bottleneck anywhere with uh, buses or anything. Um, so yeah, that's another thing too. We don't know. Is it gonna have a Bluetooth for all this price increase? Oh, we don't know. I mean, that's one of the things that I feel like they need to have. I have a little adapter that goes to the bottom of my switch that lets me uh, uh, use Bluetooth, but it's annoying, you know, because a tiny little adapter that will get lost eventually will absolutely get lost eventually. There's also rumor that there'll be exclusive games for the new switch. Ooh, there are a lot of games that suffer because the switch pro is, or the switch is, you know, it's, it's showing its age, right? Um, they say that we will probably see this holiday season. Um, I personally, I wouldn't get your hopes up. And the reason why is because right now the switch, the current switch is selling so well still, right? It, it's still selling so well. So I don't think that they're going to at the peak of who did you, is that what he said? <laughs> Please. I don't think that they're going to, they're going to start selling or even announce the, uh, uh, Switch Pro or whatever they decide to call it uh, until they start to see a dip in sales. So 
I'm not giving my hopes up because scalpers are going to buy them all for years anyways. Oh, man, that's the worst part, too. Totally. 100%. Um, you know, there are games currently that I already noticed that the, the game is the, the, the console is suffering on. And it's like Tower Unite. Like, I played Tower Unite for a good few weeks um, on my Switch. And the load times are just, just horrendous. Like, it's not even a graphically intensive game. Um, now, I will say some of that is on the developers for sure, but it is, it is definitely suffering from um, from just showing its age. Just showing its age. Hades lags occasionally. Yeah, there's some games that just straight up just lag. Just straight up lag. Because it's old. Because it's old. It's old system, man. Uh, I just hope they don't change the form factor. I just hope they don't change the form factor. I feel like they nailed the Switch. The Switch nailed something. Like, they, they hit it perfectly. It can be a console. It can be a handheld device. And, like, you just buy one. And you just choose how you want it, how you want to use it. And I, I love that. I think that they... I, I think if they try to go back to the, you know, fixed console setup, uh, I think that would be a mistake. This is this is the future of Nintendo right now. Like they should just do this. Maybe bring back the 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 um, Game Boy VR shit. Maybe bring that back or something. But, but other than that, yeah, just be done. Just have one console to rule them all, and you're fine. Um, say it's it it the devs' fault for some to some degree. Sure, I call Northern Lion played Tower United years back, and loading was the worst, even on PC. Yeah, no, it's the the game definitely needs a little bit of refinement. Um, yeah, I need to uh, use a skeleton trap on this so I get more gamepad, but yeah, it's nice. Skeleton strap, huh? What's that? Hmm. Portability is one of the main form factors, exactly. Switch does have a VR headset. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was always about some gimmicks. I don't expect a normal console. Yes, I, 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 I would appreciate that. Speaking of getting old, if you are a proud owner of a PS3, a Vita, uh, a PSP Go, um, <clears throat> those stores, the digital stores are going to disappear very, very soon. This is more of a PSA. If you happen to have one of these and you want to buy some games from the store or whatever, instead of trying to find like a disc, personally, I'm a disc guy. Right. But there are some games you can't even get on disc. Right. So you might need to uh, hop on one of the stores and buy whatever games you need to um, <clears throat> before they close down, which, by the way, those dates are for the PSP and the PS3 stores closing July 2nd and the Vita store will stay open until August 27th. So you have plenty of time. You have plenty of time to uh, to collect some change and then buy buy some games digital if you want. However. However, I should note, just let me download all your Vita games for free. I think the PSP Go uh, the, or the Vita, I think maybe the Vita, people are converting. Yeah, the Vita, yeah, it's converting to uh, um, to basically just run emulators, pretty much. So, so if you have a Vita, just just you know, yeah, PSP easy to mod, yeah, exactly. But you should note, you should note, there are some people on the internet that say that the CMOS battery, which is present uh, in the, like, you know, uh, in the PS3, um, will die. And when that clock resets, it has to check in with the server clock in order to resync. Um, and if the servers are gone, then it leaves it dead in the water. So inevitably it's going to happen now. It's already happening with the PS4, according to some people. Um, right here, it says, <clears throat> here we go. Uh, PS4 is even worse. When it dies, you can't even use discs. <laughs> so <laughs> if you have a PSP or, PSP or PS4 or 3 or anything like that, just fucking throw them away. It's like once they stop supporting, them, just fucking throw them away. Eventually the battery's gonna die, and that's you're not gonna be able to do anything with it anyways. It's just trash, apparently. So upsetting. Um <clears throat> I'm sure you could probably pop it open and swap the battery out yourself. It's probably just a regular battery, regular CMOS 2032 or 2025, whichever one it is. Um, and maybe swap it out yourself. But uh, I could I can't speak to that because I haven't had that problem uh, come up with my uh, with my PS4, which is now a Blu-ray player and it does really well too, really really well. <clears throat> yeah, like uh, four to five games total on your Vita. I think you had all of them. <laughs> it was not the Vita was definitely not their most popular, not their most popular uh, uh, 
console for sure. It was actually widely regarded as a, as a flop. Um, Vita only had three hands. Only a few. They didn't support it. Yeah, no, it's true. And usually it's what it boils down to is that they didn't get the support they, 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 uh, that they needed. Um, so, a few weeks ago, months ago, uh, we talked about uh, Chris Metzen and a couple other guys going uh, and making their own um, their own game company. And it was called Warchief Gaming. And Warchief Gaming, this is the uh, video with uh, the very, very handsome Chris Metzen discussing their first product they're going to be selling. Uh, and it is called Aurora Boris uh, Coils of the Serpent. It is a 5e rules uh, D&D um, campaign or world. Uh, it has a source book. The first source book is going to be called World Book Law Brand. So this is basically, if you're not totally familiar with uh, with uh, D&D, um, like it's a fantasy RPG, right? So <laughs> I feel like I'm preach. I'm pretty like a preacher of the choir here. I probably know the least out of all of you guys, but I'll go ahead and say it anyways for those who don't know. But yes, this is the this is the tabletop. You're sitting around. You have a character sheet, and you're you're role playing the the environment. You're doing roles. You're doing checks. So if I want to, okay, I want to open up the chest and see, okay, why don't you go and roll for blank? Okay, I'm going to roll for blank. And then you roll, and then that's going to determine what the Dungeon Master uh, says happens to you. So, he is uh, he is creating uh, a whole new world based off of 5e rules, which means the basic class is going to be there, uh, classes are going to be there. And it says here, uh, it says the first source book for the role-playing game will be World Book Law Brand providing players and game masters with an overview of the setting, as well as a system uh, for creating characters and running campaigns. Uh, Law Brand will feature five brand new species on top of several fantasy mainstays such as elves and dwarves for players to choose from. The subclasses found in the source book will include a vampiric rogue uh, option called a Wraith, wraith Blade, a druidic warrior known as a wild keeper and a soul stealing warlock to name a few so yeah if you're somebody who's looking for a new for a new world to kind of dive into we already know that chris metzen is uh good at creating those so <laughs> uh, so yeah he's going to be developing his own the the kickstarter for that <clears throat> the kickstarter for that is going to be launching on uh april 20th so here in about a month um was it Sam, Sam, was it Sam the artist for uh, for all the old Warcraft stuff? I believe so. Yes. Uh, this sounds like a good Dungeons and Doubloons session. Oh yeah, that's actually hype. Time to launch a new DD group. Yeah, exactly. Like I know, I know a lot of you guys do. Um, and you know, I very rarely do, but uh, y- there are certain things I might like look into, especially when it's new. It's exciting. It's new. It's like oh cool, it's a whole new world to explore, and you gotta read the whole book though, kind of make sure you understand all the rules and all that shit. I'm looking for my Mass Effect stuff, Josh. <laughs> Don't know if that's ever gonna start. What am I supposed to do? What am I supposed to do with the Kogan voice? <laughs> what am I supposed to do, man? Uh, they don't break character exactly. Never read any of the rules. Yeah, you ain't gotta read the rules, man. You just make it up, and then you get rolled against. Imagine if uh, if I have to read books to understand the world. Looks at Mass Effect. Thank you. Yeah, exactly. That's me. That's me. That's not that's for DMs, not players. Fine. There are te- tabletop simulator games also now. Uh, or yeah, I mean, you know what? Tabletop simulator. I'm sure that they'll probably incorporate uh, some of this stuff too. I mean, there's what like a bazillion like different fantasy RPG and tabletop actual you know conversions to uh, to mods in the workshop. Like you probably just name something and they have it there. Uh, so probably is. I mean, you know what? Probably. Well, hold on a second. Let me see. I'm, one second. Let me see. Uh, let me see. Um, 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 um tabletop simulator. Tabletop simulator. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Let me see. Workshop. All right. Let me see. Mm, so what is that for Mass Effect? Risk. Oh, you have a Reaper. They have a deck. A card deck. Okay. Regular card playing deck. Okay. Regular old playing card. Uh, 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 mm, mm, mm. They have Monopoly. Mass Effect Monopoly. Uh, they have a Jigsaw Puzzle. They have Mass Effect. Guess who? <laughs> <laughs> yeah okay nothing they have a stardew valley board do they have it here they have a stardew valley board game irl um oops let's see stardew uh stardew mines puzzle stardew valley farm stardew valley the board game scripted it says uh so yeah there it goes there you go there you go scripted so there's some stuff here yeah uh i wonder if it is this one 
Welcome to Stardew Valley. Here, you gotta work together with other players in order to fulfill Grandpa's goals and restore the community center. Wait, hold now, on a second, this is the official, so. this is, wait, hold on, wait, wait, what? This is like the official, official, official. This is the checkers game where grandson and granddad will bond. No, it's not, okay, okay, okay. I think he's taking footage from the official one. Um, <clears throat> anyway, so, yeah, I mean, tabletop simulator. The one game that everybody should own, really. <laughs> it's just basically infinite games. Um, so, moving on. Uh, speaking of people who used to work for Blizzard that are now doing other things, this is uh, just kind of a... Oh, that's I uh, can't drag that into Steam. Um, uh oh, I messed it up. I messed up my links. There we go. Move that over. So, uh, Frost Giant, which I, this is from... Okay, I was almost sure if I was gonna load. Uh, this is from uh, uh, what was his name again? Do, 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 do. Morton, Tim, I think Tim Morton, uh, who was uh, the uh, StarCraft Two. He worked for StarCraft Two, uh, Wings of Liberty, and then also uh, somebody else too. Uh, Tim Campbell, formerly lead campaign designer on Warcraft Three: The Frozen Throne. So uh, people basically leave Blizzard and they form their own companies. Um, and this is another one. They're making a new RTS. So if those of you guys are interested in RTSs, these guys just got a, a round of, of funding and they said, uh, this really is the capital that enabled us to hire the team and will enable us to build a prototype. Um, you won't see anything from these guys for, this is for four years, right? Or five years. It says, uh, it says here, it says As aspirationally, we would love to have something that's all that's ready to launch in under four years. But coming out of Blizzard when it's done is very much a mantra that I think both Tim Campbell and I take to heart. So like, if you're an RTS fan and if specifically if you like Blizzard RTSs, you probably catch a little bit of that flavor here. That might be. I like that. I like that attitude. I like that attitude. That might be lit. <laughs> just the might the might just remember there's the might part it might it might be lit yeah so everybody leaves blizzard um until i guess inevitably they're forced out of blizzard uh but the blizzard had some news recently as well it might ju it just might slap that's right it just might slap so blizzard had some changes to uh or apply some changes to their world of warcraft subscription System Sunday is going so loud. Um, where you can no longer purchase individual months. Previously, you could purchase 30 days of game time flat out. If you were like, I only want to play WoW for like 30 days, you could just buy 30 days of game time. Now, wow, it's the worst for, for showing this stuff because they don't have big pretty pictures. Uh, <laughs> it's just basically a blue post, which I appreciate that. But still, I like big pictures. Um, so yeah, if you wanted to play just for like a couple weeks, I was gonna get on chicken in a while, whatever, you know, you would have to do one of two things. One, you would have to buy 60 days at $29.99 instead of $14.99. Uh, or you would sub, like a normal sub, then you'll get the $14.99 rate or whatever the rate is for the sub. Um, then you could cancel it. So, it's not at all a consumer friendly way of, or not, it's not at all a consumer friendly change. This is purely, uh, well, not purely, but this feels like a greedy change. There is an argument to be made that bots will only buy, there you go, exactly, on top. Bots will only buy, or people who run botters will only buy one month at a time because they risk getting banned. Um, but this feels like the punishing everybody because of the handful of people that pirate, right? Um, I don't know how bad the bots system is in, um, in WoW or in classic or retail, uh, but this feels a little heavy handed. 60 days game time, I think is period. Like, I don't think you could buy any more than that or any less. Uh, so I bought six months, but then I just canceled it. Then you just canceled it. It's weird. It's a w stupid, weird change, but I don't really see it affecting really that much. It do if you, if you are somebody who subs to the game, it doesn't affect you at all. There's zero impact it's going to have on you and your life. Um, but if you're somebody who likes to hop in every once in a while, I just kind of check it out. Like it will, you know, it's just, it's just an added change. You, you could sub and then unsub. And that's fine. 
or you could buy 60 days worth. Uh, bots are really bad, but they're not buying subs or buy tokens with their game with the farmed gold. Yeah, that's what I read. So it's like it doesn't even really solve that problem. Uh, literally cannot use trade chat ever. And uh, the ever constant complaint about Druid gold farmers all over the place from what I heard. Druid gold farmers, huh? Uh, so bots make money with what back in my day they were Chinese. <laughs> no, but for real, so why is it druid far are druids just like better at farming, I guess? Uh so bots make um spam moonbeam. <laughs> Moonfire spam. God damn, cut it on top. Get your memes down. Uh see, so bots make money with 30 days to level someone. Uh for example, charge XML. Starfall. It's a travel form. I guess so. We'll just force people to buy physical game cards instead to avoid subbing to unsub. I, you know, I, I, I believe you can't even buy the physical game cards outside of a, I mean, I'm sure once they, once they run out of them, then that'll change, but I'm not quite sure about the, the physical game cards thing yet. Uh, doesn't it make uh, the same as buying a card at a store? Those were 60. Yeah, those are, yeah, that's right. Those are 60 day cards. So it'd be like buying a card at a store for sure. Um, <clears throat> it's not a meme. They legit spam Moonfire. No, no, but he called it. He called it. He called it. What did he call it? I don't even know. He called it something else. <laughs> uh, it's cause the, oh, trust me. I know about the Moonfire spam meme. I've, I've seen the videos <laughs> back in the day. I remember it was a PVP video. Someone made it was a, it was a, it was a, uh, a droid is running around and then like he had his, he had his UI hidden and then we showed it. Every single skill was Moonfire. It was fucking great. Moonbeam. Okay, I don't know, man. I'll play World of Warcraft anymore. I'm just making words up. Uh, <clears throat> it's because the Druish people have all the air. Did you really? Did you really? When I'm not wearing my space balls shirt? Uh, boom cans and light groups of three to six spamming Moonfire pre pre level cap ad force uh force to spawn a shitload of mobs in a small area. There you go. So the so bots are clearly a problem. I guess they're druids now uh, that are mostly doing it. Um, well, okay. I guess they're mostly rolled druids. So it kind of sucks that you know if you're a druid, a legit druid, that you're now categorized as uh, uh, as somebody who farms. Um, but yeah, or someone who's a bot or something like that. But yeah, so this is this is a weird change. It's definitely a weird change that they would just go and uh, make a change like this. Um, Probably bought exactly. How, how dare people make money? Now, if case you missed it, Activision Blizzard did have, <clears throat> excuse me, did have a uh, a stellar 2020. It says here, Activ Act Blizz delivered 2.43 billion in net revenue in quarter four. Their fiscal year coincides with the regular calendar years as well above the two billion dollars that they were expecting for the full year. They brought in revenue of eight point zero eight billion. Once again, above the seven point six six billion they had promised. So they are doing really, really well. Their stock is going up. Uh, where are they at now? Actually, let's let's check. We'll see where they're at right this second. I'm genuinely curious. Um, let me see. Acti stack. Right now they are. Oh, okay, that's not it. <laughs> it's uh. Oh yeah, they're still yeah. That's 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 that. Oh, that's very recent then. Yeah. So there you go. So yeah, they're still doing just today. They're still ninety something. Um, six months. They're still doing still doing fantastic. So yeah, like they're they're just making money all over the place. So. You don't have to worry about Blizzard. You work for Blizzard. It's totally fine, right? Totally fine. It's job security, baby. Job security. <gasps> Layoffs reported Blizzard. That's what happens when you make money. When you make money, you got to let people go. Oh, man. We made a half a billion extra dollars. What are we going to do with that money? I'm going to send everyone home forever. So... Yes, Blizzard did have another round of layoffs. Uh, and it totaled, it looks like it, initially it was 50, and then uh, then we later discovered that it was uh, upwards of 190. They claim that they are restructuring the esports division, uh, but that's only for 50 people. That doesn't account for the other the other 140. So, or sorry, other, um, uh, yeah, 140. So we don't really know what's up with those, but we know that 50 of them at least at least according to this, it says Activision executive Tony Petiti. Um, Petiti? 
Petiti, oh, not Petiti, <laughs> probably Petiti, uh, said the 50 esports specific layoffs are a result of the company's attempting attempt at reinventing its esports division amidst the global COVID-19 pandemic. Petiti, 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 oh my God, told, I'm seriously, not, I told SBJ that the company is planning for a future where Activision's esports look different and are less dependent on live uh, events. Remember... Last year, when this happened, YouTube is the exclusive streaming home for Call of Duty and Overwatch leagues. And we were like, what? After spending two years and people were hype, man. People were hype. We had a we had an Overwatch channel, Bro Overwatch or something. Overbros, I can't remember. Um, <laughs> I'm too high for you to ever say that name again. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so you too. Anyways, so um, you, yeah. So we, they made the switch after two years of being on Twitch. They made a switch to uh, YouTube exclusive for all of their stuff, and hype died. Like hype basically died. Um, even on our channel, like be, be, people stopped following. Overwatch League, if you're not familiar, was uh, was basically city based leagues. There was a Dallas League. There was a San Francisco League. Like they basically had city leagues similar to actual like like professional mainstream sports that you would typically see on like ESPN and such like NHL, NBA, NFL, etc. So OWL was basically throwing their hat in the ring say, yeah, we could do this like instead of just doing collegiate stuff, we could do city-based stuff. Um, Owl ceased to exist for me when I moved to Twitch. Exactly. Moved from Twitch rather. Uh, so it, 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 it did not do well. We even saw, I have an article here from later that year where it says after a rough 2020 season, the Overwatch League aims to end on a high, end on a high note. They did end up with like, I think like 347,000 viewers or something like that for their finals, which is a good number. Uh, but overall, like, you know, this is right here. It says after this year has been tumultuous one for the Overwatch League. It wasn't supposed to be this way. The 2020 season was slated to be a breakout year. Uh, and it says the dream was halted due to the ongoing pandemic and the inability for teams and players to travel. To make matters worse, worse viewership dropped after a shift from Twitch to YouTube, of course, uh, and the rapid rise of Riot's team shooter Valorant kicked off an exodus of big name players. Uh, and at one point, the second best team in the league dropped its entire roster. So yeah, it's a combination of switching from Twitch to YouTube, which obviously took a hit. Uh, Valorant taking off and Valorant has had a great past few months. I mean, I'll talk shit about Valorant, you know, because it's like, oh yeah, it's, it's another game that everyone's playing. Uh, but I mean, it's still, it's, it's a game that's setting numbers um, and it's Riot game. So they're going to promote it as if it's like the number one thing. Right. Um, and people will watch it because of that. Similar to like Overwatch League. Remember like Overwatch League that like you couldn't go anywhere without seeing something about Owl. And it was just like, it's like, oh, you guys, stop, you guys are just talking about it, trying to make it a thing. Stop talking about Owl. <laughs> You're not going to make Owl a thing by talking about it, right? And then it became a thing, and then they moved off of Twitch. Um, and so switching to YouTube exclusive streams kills the eSports. See Hearthstone. Exactly, exactly. Um, it's from the layoffs are actually from people from Hearthstone, uh, Hearthstone division, eSports division. So yeah, they're saying that, you know, they're saying now that they are... Um, <clears throat> Here it is. So it says, uh, it's important to note that he was talking about the video. So players are increasingly choosing to connect with our games digitally and the esports team, much like traditional sports, entertainment and broadcasting industries has had to adapt to its business due to the impact the pandemic has had on live events. So. I mean, I feel like UFC and NHL and a whole bunch of other like sports leagues are bringing in people to the arenas slowly. And we're, I mean, frankly, we're kind of getting to the end of the pandemic with so many people getting vaccines. Eventually, your retransmission rate's going to get so low that people are going to just go out and do stuff. Maybe technically it's not going to be over, right? But people will still go out and do stuff because when your retransmission rate is so low, the odds of you getting it so slim, why are you going to lock yourself in? After being in for a year or year and a half or however long it's been. So people are going to start going to arenas. The demand's going to be there. And they're going to be like, fuck, if they want to come in, sure. You have to wear a mask. No big deal. So 
Oh, it's a rap now. I, oh, for some of you guys? Yeah, for some of you guys? Uh, oh, he was rapping. <laughs> he was rapping on Sherman. <laughs> I thought you meant it's a rap, like it's a W-A-R-P, R-A-P, sorry. Um, <laughs> I just assume that you guys can't spell, all right? Uh, I don't think I can ever leave now. I've been here so long. Yeah, less than 40% is fully vaccinated. We're still a ways off. I'm telling you, look at, look at, hold up. No. Here's how you know. Here's how you know it's over. It's over. This is the line to get into Las Vegas right now. Okay? I'll wait. Okay, the pandemic is over. <laughs> According to these people who are going out for spring break, the shit's over, man. So this seems like all I'm saying is that just seems like traffic. Oh, you have no idea. Okay, the I-15 northbound is just a fucking wreck. It's just and it's and it's that was early Friday. That was that was uh, uh, that was an hour. It was an hour, two hours ago. So two o'clock. It's just gonna get worse. Um, Gotta go spend that stimmy check. That's right. Strippers just ain't the same with N95s on. <laughs> Texas open full. I'm sure they appreciate it. Don't have to smell your drunk ass breath. Uh, that's normal LA freeway traffic, dude. Like this, this. I've, there's only two lanes. Okay, the I-15 is two lanes, and this this goes on for literal miles. My, wait, hold on a second. What is this? The uh, what is the street coming up? Let me see. It is uh, Miniola. Let's see where that is. Let me see Miniola. Road and I-15. I want to see where that's at. Um, let me see. Maps. This is what should pull it up. Miniola Road. Let's see. Mini oh, Miniola. Miniola. Barstow. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. 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 Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> so, here is the road that they passed. Okay. Right here. This is Las Vegas. 20 miles per, what is that? Two inches or something like that? So it's like, wait, here, just maybe here, I don't know. This, between Barstow and Henderson, it's just, just stopped. That's a lot. You compare it to LA, you go to LA and it's just like, yeah, it's LA traffic. Not, th this is all of LA traffic stretched out like a spaghetti. Okay? It's a lot. <laughs> it's over. The pandemic is over. It's done. The point of that was, why would Blizzard let all these people go for esports related issues because of the pandemic when the pandemic is just about just about done? They could start inviting people in. They're restructuring something. You made a clip with my rap. Oh shit! I'll check it out later. Didn't know I was rapping. Shit. Yeah. Oh, I got that flow. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, there has been some speculation that this is just an excuse, letting people go, doing restructuring, things like this, um, because Bobby Kotick has a, um, $200 million bonus coming. I'll read this part here. This is, this is not speculation. It's true, but not necessarily related to the layoffs. This is just you know, Bobby getting a lot of money, okay? It says here, it says, according to Kotaku, union-sponsored pension fund advocacy organization, CTW Investment Group, has claimed Activision's currently soaring stock price, which has climbed throughout the pandemic, will see Kotick uh, benefiting from the shareholder value creative incentive clause of his 2016 employment agreement. This payout would allow Kotick to, co to collect uh, incentive bonuses he missed in previous years. CTW Investment Group alleges this windfall could total up to $200 million. $200 million for one of the most overpaid CEOs in, in the universe. <sighs> totally unrelated, but still could be cutting out the $1 million per person laid off and not be a fucking tool. Yeah, yeah. Um... 
you could say that they don't need those people. So what are they supposed to do? Have them hang out, be on the payroll, right? Sure. Uh, can you move them to other positions? Sure. Do those positions exist? Probably, maybe not. It's okay. So then they've got to let them go. Sure. Okay. It's fine. Um, which is why I say this is probably not related to that. Um, but that's a stupid amount of money. Like that's, I mean, oh God, it's just depressing um, that so many people get let go in a business that is clearly thriving. I feel like esports has not gone down. Sure, real time like interactions have pretty much ceased because we're not in person, but that's about over. Those layoffs should have been done in October. But if you did in October, a bunch of layoffs, maybe your stock price would go down. Then you look at that fat 200 milli. Still a stupid amount, yes. So. Ah, oh, man. It's only 190 people. Only. 800 were let go last week, last year. Um, what do you even spend 200 million on? So much money? I have heard hard time understanding it. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. She on your fans right. I mean, the peak of Blizzard Blitz- right now is what? Overwatch? Ouch. I just, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, they're... Their Overwatch League was doing fine when it was on Twitch, and I feel like it would have been very successful staying on Twitch. Um, YouTube was were the ones basically buying into a sinking ship. Like Overwatch League season one was great, you know. Um, it wasn't going to continue to grow. I don't think. I don't know what Blizzard's doing right now. Like I really honestly don't. Overwatch two is not even slated. Probably not even this year. Diablo four. We have no idea when we're actually going to get that. You know, like we, like, is Diablo Immortal out? <laughs> like, I feel like we did, we're just not getting it. StarCraft 2 has been basically abandoned, pretty much. Um, so, yeah. Al, just, uh, oh, General is big. Is a big question mark to you? Yeah. Just going to keep boycotting Blizzard. Active Blizzard reactions lately have done nothing to busy. I, I, yeah, I don't know what they're, half of their, according to sources, according to the fucking news, uh, half of their income is still from WoW subs. So... No Call of Duty. Yeah, you're right. They can make another Call of Duty. It's true. Um, Owl was never going to succeed anyways. They never made a good way made a good way to watch it as a spectator. It was hard to watch as a spectator for sure. Uh for sure. Um but but at the same time, you know, um uh Valorant is still doing good, like doing great right now in terms of numbers and uh and money. So yeah, Call of Duty and WoW are easy money. That's what it sounds. It, it feels like they keep on trimming these corners, they keep on making these cuts, keep on doing these things, and like, and now it's just, uh, it's just basically WoW and Call of Duty basically supporting the whole IP. Like, we're not, or the whole uh, company, we're not really getting anything that's out that's new. You know, we have some stuff coming up, but wow, man, like even EA has like a bazillion different you know games under its uh, uh, under its wing big titles that are you know doing things but you know i mean ea sports just to, just to name one division <laughs> it's just fucking super massive uh like you triple your output with a quarter of the people shadowlands was the first uh expansion i finally didn't even buy yeah uh when ea is doing better than blizz sc2 left for dead um Here's the storm dead. Yeah, when the car game is hanging on for now. Yeah, Hearthstone. They cut, but then they rehashed it. Money make class one, classic Call of Duty. All right. They need to make a new Crash Bandicoot. That's what they need to do. So, um, speaking of, hi, babe. Oh, sure, I'll take another one. Oh. You were taking a nap. I didn't want to bother you, so I went ahead and got myself one. Thank you so much. I'll have to finish this one very quickly now. Did you have a good nap? All right, good. There you go. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of StarCraft. <laughs> Speaking of StarCraft, uh we know that uh Chat says hi. Um we know she says hi chat. Uh we know that Blizzard has pretty much stepped off from doing any kind of StarCraft support, period. It's all basically being supported by the leagues themselves. Um there's a couple of leagues that are in uh, uh Korea that uh that I watch pretty regularly right with some regularity um and that is gsl and uh asl gsl starcraft 2 uh, asl is brood war starcraft 1 um and recently the uh asl decided to cut their english stream 
Their English stream is Tasteless Artosis doing the casting. Um, now, personally, I was a bit bruised by this because I am a big fan of of uh, of Tasteless Artosis just as casters. Um, I also prefer Brood War over StarCraft Two. I like StarCraft Two. I'll watch StarCraft Two, but if I had to choose between the two, I would I would watch Brood War stuff. Um, and they decided to cut the stream cut the uh, the English casting they're not going to pay them for it so Artosis said and it's not because of any good disagreement or anything like that like they basically just decided that we're not making enough to support it uh, foreigners don't like to watch Starcraft 1 foreigners don't like to watch that's all you hear uh, and to a degree they're, they're right like, compared to Korea yeah of course you know but the, the world is massive you know like there are people out there who watch this stuff I mean I watched it I'm just one person out of 8 billion uh, that are not in Korea so what they've done, Artosis and Tasteless have set up a um, they've set up a Patreon and they're going to cast season 10 or season 11. I think the next two seasons. Um, so they set up a Patreon so that way they could uh, uh, basically pay to, to, to support them. And then like, you know, doing this, uh, um, uh, doing the casting for this. And it's been pretty successful so far, actually. So they are at it's uh, patreon.com slash ASL English if you want to support. This is for, again, this is for um, Brood War esports. OK, um, but they're at ten thousand dollars right now a month. And they just released this just recently, probably like a day ago, two days ago or something like that. So this is for me personally, I think this is great for any of you guys who watch any Brood War Starcraft stuff. Great. If you support Tasteless and Artosis, uh, who went to went to South Korea to follow the dream of just basically doing Starcraft stuff for a living. Uh, they took a huge cut, took a huge cut. I mean, they got they got Tasteless out there casting PUBG games. Shit's hard, man. Shit's hard. But. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, there's uh, it's it, it. You can still support the guys if you want to watch it. Those vods are gonna go on the um the Africa TV where normally you'd watch ASL. Um, they're gonna post it on those channels. Uh, so all the vods are gonna be in the same place. You can't think of yeah, I know American Sign Language and then it's English right afterwards. I know exactly, exactly. So uh, so yeah, y'all should watch some more Brood War. All right, I see chat. I see chat. I see chat just kind of chilling. Right? It's like, okay. Yeah, Star Wars. Sure. Sure. I get more movement when I talk about Sony, but it's fine. Brood Wars fucking tits, man. You guys, you guys will like it. Uh, glad to see they're well-funded. Yes, me too. Me too. Thank you. Thank you, Jordan. Now, speaking of well-funded, we are getting a new map very soon. March 31st. New Among Us map, the airship. Welcome, recruit. Get yourself acquainted with the layout of the top Take a of look. the airship. Enough slacking. Go do your tasks. You may need to take a ladder to get to certain areas, or maybe just take a nice shortcut. I love this. A moving platform. Choose a room to start in after a meeting. Starting a different room. Someone keeps trying to sabotage us. Stop their plan. Keep your eyes peeled. We definitely have an imposter here. New animations. More importantly, new hats. This is early 2021. It is. That is indeed. What is it? Uh, March 31st. We're going to see that. I hope they've been working on tooling to make uh, new maps faster instead of this map taking this whole ass time. Yeah, they did. They did a whole write up on um, on all the work they've had to do j just to make sure the maps are good. They still have a small team. Um, that, that garbage bag Tassies have coffee crowds leaking out everywhere. Jesus, oh man, the nightmare. Uh, but yeah, I'm looking forward to this March 31st. Uh, us as a community, we do play a lot of this, and that is on next Wednesday. Wednesday. So um, next Wednesday is it March 31st? Is it come out right? Yeah, March 31st. Yeah. So next Wednesday, we will um, we'll hop in and we'll play this new murder. That's right. They are now a team of five people. That's actually yes, yes they are. They're a growing team. Uh, they are. They do want to keep the team relatively small. Um, 
but at the same time they need to you know try to uh, you know try to expand and try to make more maps and all that stuff so hopefully we do get um a bunch of new maps i i feel like there's probably more opportunity than just new maps i mean um the maps current maps have so much replayability I, I hope that they put enough time in to make sure that the maps have that same level of replayability. It would be a it would be a tragedy if you finally get into this brand new map and then and then you're like, eh, it's all right, but you know, map blank is better. Um, so we'll see what happens. But some of the features they're putting in, I mean, you can see that there's um, you can start in three different locations. Uh, there's the moving platform, which I don't know if you picked up on it, but you know the guy went across on the moving platform, but then he wasn't able to come back because it was sabotaged. So you could keep people trapped over there. So there's there. I, I'm glad that they're gonna keep some of that stuff. Oh, what was that? Actually, yeah, here is this sabotage here. Um, but hold on a second. What was that list? I didn't see that uh, before. Mm, see, enter ID code, fix wiring, download data, reset breakers, empty garbage can, uh, put away rifles, divert power to gap room, stabilize steering, uh, clean clean toilet, <laughs> polish Ruby. First game that doesn't add any maps, make the game harder. I mean, it's just about learning the maps. Once you learn the maps, then you, um, uh, that doesn't, that's the only hurdle really is just learning the maps for the most part uh but yeah i mean i would like to see more maps like, i think i think that this game would benefit from probably a, a roster of about 10 maps uh before it starts to get a little bit too cluttered i honestly think like 10 maps would probably be good for this think like unfortunate spaceman unfortunate spaceman has like like 10 maps or something doesn't it um and you know the only the only problem with that game was it was hard to for viewers to watch the game uh and follow what was going on Right. That was I mean, this game is super easy to follow what's going on. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I do feel like this could be an easy 10 map game. Body community for Among Us is huge. Adding some of those uh, uh, good use would be um, the what it would be awesome. Mod to show me. We also need new roles. Oh, so, yeah, that was the, that's right. You can mod new roles, too. I'm going to look. I got to look into that. I know that uh, Next has been bothering me about that. And um yeah, I'm being kind of I'm being kind of a curmudgeon about it, so I need to stop doing that. Some of the model roles are ridiculous. Yeah, see, I need, I need to look into that. I need to look into that shit. Maybe we'll do that next week along with this, all right? Or maybe we'll play, I don't know, vanilla or something. As long as we have proximity chat, that's all I care about. That shit is the best. Proximity chat is so good. I can never go back. I can never go back from proximity chat. It's just too damn good. Uh... We got to sign up next week. <laughs> this would be a line. Uh, Among Us for leaving the vaults, dude. Yeah, I, I can't wait to see um, what kind of maps come up in the future. But uh, yeah, it definitely can't be one map every fucking nine months or however long it's been since the game's kind of really skyrocketed. Um, I can't go back to the piece of quiet of non proxy chat for seriously. Like, just the proxy chat is just that good. It's just that good. Well, that's it. That's it for news. Thank you so much for hanging out. Chat, my lovely co-host. You guys are the best. I got two beers to go through, so we're not going anywhere for a minute. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you. So bye, say bye to YouTube. Bye, Tubes. Bye, Tubes. I've definitely been here the whole time. That's right. Everyone's been here the whole time. That's right. That's right. That's right. Let me take you nuts. There we go. Bye, Slackers. We'll miss you, YouTube. That's right. Bye, Tubes. Bye. Hello, Dad. Yep. See you later. Thank you for the news. Thank you for watching, everybody. Okay, then bye. Wrong button. Ha 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 ha! Bah!